Greetings, so it's it's me, James, your BS Sensei, back with another Power Query tutorial! In today's video, we are going to be looking at the iterative function, list accumulate, to basically take this little table over there where it's got periods, got intervals, got start dates, and we're going to iteratively add new columns depending on this period column over there. And then the context of the periods we're going to add is going to be based on the interval. And we're going to add it from the start date. You can see we add years. We added three years there. This we added eight months to the data set. And at the end, you might understand the iterative functions a little bit more. Anyway, enough talking. Let me show you how to do it. All right, so you click in your data set, go to data, and you say from table or range to get it into Power Query. This is Power Query. The very first function we're going to use, I'm just going to explain it by adding a column here quickly. Uh, we're going to use date, add months, and we're going to add it to the start date, and we're going to add, let's say, 12 months. This is the formula we're going to use, all right? And we just added months to the start date, and we're going to use this formula over there, but we're going to dynamically feed it the months in there, okay? In order to determine those months, we need to translate these intervals into months. So I'm going to add a record for that. We're going to add a new step, and we just delete that. And in brackets, square brackets, I'm going to say year equals 12 months. Month equals one month. Semi-annual equals six months. Quarter equals three months. And now if I execute this, you see that we've created a record. We're going to use this record for lookups. Let's rename that, press F2, period, months. Okay, so now that we have that, let's add a new step and we go back to change type. All right, so let's quickly head on over to what the function, what the function looks like. So we're gonna use list accumulate. List accumulate takes a list, takes a seed and has an accumulator, so three arguments. Okay, let's look at an example of that. In this case, list accumulate, we have a list of one, two, five. So something to iterate through. So we need to iterate through something, a sequence, one, two, three, four, five. And then we need to start somewhere. So in this case, we have a sequence of one, two, five. We want to start at one. We're going to start there. But if I said three there, it would start at the third instance there and then start iterating through. And then you have your accumulator. In this case, you must always declare a state in the current. And in this case, the accumulator is multiplying the state by the current. So what does that mean? So let's quickly look at this table. So at step one, your current value is one. So your state is equal to your current value in that first one. All right, so it's one times one is one. So then in your next step, you, your state now takes this as the starting point. That is your state. And then your current value is two. One times two is two. So your state is now two, but your current value is three. And you multiply that and six. So we're going to use that principle to basically start with our list with our iterator would have 10 columns. So we're going to add 10 columns and then we're going to iterate through each of these and we're going to add dynamically. We're going to start with the table and we're going to add months using that the date month function to add the period depending on that to the start. Date. So how do we get to our list that we need to iterate through? So let's quickly take this. So I want to start from one to let's say list max. And I'm referring to this table and I am looking at the period column over there. And that will give me the thing I need to iterate through. You can see we have a maximum of 10 iterations. So we're going to iterate, we're going to add 10 columns to our data set. So I'm just going to copy this out, keep it in my clipboard. Okay, so now we can start our formula. So we're going to say list accumulate and we're going to give it. First, we need to give it our list. Our list would then be list of 1 to 10. We just created now. Our starting point would be simply this entire table. We want to start with this table because we want to append to this table. And now we're going to look at the accumulator. We must have a state and we must have a current. Okay, so in context of that, I'm going to say table, add columns because I want to add new columns. I'm going to take my state, which is my current state of my iterator, and I'm going to add a column called date. And I'm going to append date the column with current. Current is a number. I need to convert that to text. I'm going to say text from and wrap that. And then I need to say each. And there we go. So I'm just going to say, okay. And now you see the iterator actually did its magic. It iteratively added 10 columns of data based on this. But now it's just a one. We just have a marker there of a one. So let's go back into that one because not all of these should contain values. This one should only go up to three. So I'm just going to add Press shift and enter, take the one out. So we are going to start an if statement there. I'm going to say, if my current, which is one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten is bigger than my period column, then give me a null, else give me a one. Let's see what that does. See what that does now, we see this one is adding three periods, one, two, three, and everything after that is null. This one, this 10, should have 10 until the end there. So now we at least know where our cutoffs are for each row. And now we're going to do some magic. So instead of adding a one, I want to bring the number of months into these columns, depending on that lookup list we have, which was called period months. Okay, so how are we going to do that? So I'm going to start with period months. So now it just returns the record. There we go. So there's the record. Okay, let's extract record field names from the record. Okay, so now this turns into a list. Now we have year, month, semi-annual. We kind of want to look that value up from to get the number of months in there. Okay, so let's quickly see. So based on this interval, I want to find the number of months. So I'm just going to add there list position of in these field names, which is basically year, month, semi-annual. I want to find the position of in that list where the interval is equal to that so that column. So I want to find our relative interval. So I'm just going to say, okay. Ah, now we got zero, one, two. So what that means is zero means for year, if we look at period month, that's position zero. So that's the basis of our lookup. For month, it should look at one. One is that level over there. Semi-annual should be two. Semi-annual should be two. Okay. And now we just need to return, instead of the one, zero, one, the position, we need to return the actual value. So I'm going to say from the period months, use that position to get the answer. And that's going to give us an error. It's because I need to convert this, which is a record. I need to convert this into a list. So that's quite simple. I just go record to list. And if I press OK, there we go. These are the this is the number of months I'm returning. See, so that that now that year is 12 months. That month is one month. OK, now we need to multiply it by that period. So I'm simply going to multiply. That period is simply our current value. So I'm just going to say multiply it by that. And now we have the basis of that. So we can see we're going to add three years to this. So in the first one, 12 months, 24 months, 36 months. So we just need to plug in the date add months function. Right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say date add months. I want to add to the start date. I want to add this number we just create. And there we go. We actually did it. We actually did it. We just need to format these numbers now. So all we're going to do is I'm going to say date to text because I would like to return it into the format day, day, month, 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 year, 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 year. And say, OK, and there we go. There we go up until the end. And let's return that to Excel. OK, so iterator is quite a touchy subject in Power Query because it's not as intuitive as it would be in something like Python, um, especially given the state and current. You kind of like need to wrap your head around the meaning of state and current and then just apply the iterator and you can apply the iterator to add columns. You can change values. You can do some cool stuff. So hopefully this opened your mind and your ideas to what you can do with iterators. Anyway, BA Sensei out.